Now, this is a really important uh, part of the talk, the vacuolar and lichenoid uh, types of interface dermatitis. Recognizing interface dermatitis is a crucial skill in derm path, and it's not that hard to do. What you're looking for, we call interface dermatitis because at the interface of the epidermis and dermis is where the inflammatory damage is happening. And what happens is lymphocytes come up here and they attack the basal keratinocytes for whatever reason. And in the process, some of the keratinocytes die, which gives you these little pink blobs of dead keratin. So people have called these lots of different names, but they're basically apoptotic, um, or some people say necrotic keratinocytes, but they're probably really apoptosis. Some people also call them cytoid bodies or savat bodies, depending on the clinical disease, or dyskeratotic keratinocytes. There's lots of different words. But the main point is pink blobs of dead keratinocyte along the basal layer, and white little bubbles or vacuoles. People call that vacuolar change or liquefactive degeneration. This is basically little vacuoles that are forming as the lymphocytes are damaging and destroying the basal keratinocytes. And a good kind of quick test for is there interface dermatitis or not, can you easily draw a line where the basal layer of the epidermis is or the basal membrane is? Well, not really here, right? It's kind of blurry. See how it's blurred? It's not a clear cut interface between the epidermis and dermis. Whenever I see that, that instantly makes me think, I bet there's uh, interface dermatitis. Then I can go look for scattered lymphocytes, vacuoles, and dying keratinocytes. This is a very robust example here. Sometimes it's much more sparse and subtle, and you may only have some focal dying keratinocytes and little bubbles, but just keep that in mind, and you can go on higher power and look if you're thinking, oh, maybe there's interface change here. And finding this is really helpful because there are a list of diseases that tend to have interface and other diseases that really don't. So it really can help narrow down the differential diagnosis clinically. And here's some of the examples of diseases, erythema multiforme and the Stevens-Johnson toxic epidermal necrosis necrolysis spectrum, acute graft versus host disease, fixed drug eruption, lupus, and other connective tissue diseases like dermatomyositis, and on and on. There are others, but, um, but it's really helpful to find that because it can, uh, it can be very useful to the treating physician. So here's an example of lichenoid interface dermatitis. Now, I think of vacuolar and lichenoid as just two ends of the same spectrum. Both of them have vacuoles, lymphocytes at the basal layer, and dying keratinocytes. The difference is that vacuolar, like I just showed you, has relatively sparse lymphocytes, and lichenoid has like a bajillion lymphocytes forming a thick band right underneath the epidermis, okay? If you see a thick band of lymphocytes and you wonder, is this truly a lichenoid interface? Then go down closer and look for the dying keratinocytes. True lichenoid interface dermatitis should have dying keratinocytes at the basal layer somewhere, okay? So this is an example of lichen planus, a real one of the, prototyp the prototypic disease of lichenoid dermatitis. But there are a variety of others that can, can have lichenoid um, change. Sometimes lupus kind of is more dense inflammation and actually looks lichenoid. Um, there's, uh, some types of drug eruption uh, can look lichenoid. And I guess I should bring that up here. Like, uh, drug eruptions uh, are a problematic situation because they're very difficult to prove by a biopsy and they're also very difficult to disprove. That was one of my mentors, Ron Rapini, liked to say that. And I thought it was a great, a great quote from him. Because it's true, there's so many different patterns that of inflammatory disease in the skin that can be caused by a drug. And a drug is really difficult, too, for the clinicians, the treating physicians to deal with because, I mean, a lot of times patients, you know, maybe older, maybe on 10 different drugs, a lot of which they actually need. And so figuring out which drug is causing the problem, taking them off of that drug, which might be a heart medication or something else, is obviously really difficult and frustrating a situation to deal with uh, clinically. But it is true that drug eruptions are, are kind of a, a difficult thing to, to, be, to be sure that you're dealing with or to totally exclude.